Yes, out of the phone box here, and we made it to a good friend of ours in the petrol head family, Zach's Garage. This place is unreal. We've had a little look around it already. Scoot's been absolutely jaw on the floor. We've come in to grab a blue Mustang GT from Centurion. Scoot, stop getting wet. Let's go inside and check out this unbelievable collection. I'm buzzing. Right, so we're inside just one of the many rooms and I'm blown away by the memorabilia. This stuff is, doesn't matter how much it's worth, but it's an era that's just gone, disappeared. And like 1920s petrol pumps, the Globe collection alone that is littered throughout all the rooms. Oh, did you see the pista? There, there's a pista there. Pretty epic spec as well. There's so many things that are one of one or restored that there's not another one or anywhere in the world. And I'm just absolutely blown away. Like literally been walking around for two hours already. Um, always knew about Zach's collection. We've done the live on Instagram and we wanted to arrange to come and see. There's a gap here. There's a gap. And in that gap is something special, which is in a workshop. So they've got their own workshop on site. They've got their own collection. They've got, what's interesting is not much in that 60s, 70s, 80s gap, but a load of pre-war cars. There's one of one Jags, SS100, the first SS100 that did 100 miles an hour. Zach and Robert, his dad, have always been so gracious with their uh, generosity with our charity events and opening up this private collection, which is their, um, it's their version of a works of art, collecting works of art. And these cars, even this 928 GT was the very last of the model. Now, Zach don't like it too much, but his dad absolutely loves it. And that's what's so great, because the two of them have got different tastes from the Mura, which blows me away. The things that are in here are phenomenal. The Mercedes Gullwing is the best car in the world. It's the best Gullwing in the world. It won Pebble Beach, it won Salon Privé as the best Gullwing in Europe. So the car is just, it's a petrol head's lair. Scoop, I'd say turn the camera on yourself, get people like knowing what you think of this collection because it's absolutely epic. But that's my point of view. And I might think this is amazing. You might think it's not great, but you love that sort of thing. So go for a little walk with Scoop and see what's happening. So here I am in Zach's garage, I've taken over the mic, hopefully you can hear me. A bit of briefing with a piece stand now, this is more for me, my generation. Don't get me wrong, every car in here is of course for me, I love cars. Being just turned 19, this is more my area, so I know a bit more about it. The Fry Pista, got to see Zach hooing this around Donington Racetrack for the Supercar Driver uh, celebration. Uh, this place is phenomenal, it's got so much older history to it. It's like a museum, if I had to describe it. But some of my favourite cars, of course, got the Pista, Zach's Regera, three million pound, full carbon blue, 24 karat gold, beast. It is phenomenal. Um, you've got the 300 SL like Chiro said, something like that, it's just priceless. You couldn't even name it, millions. It is immaculate, the condition. You've got the Mura, which again is one of my favourites. And the list literally goes on and on and on. And don't get me wrong, I have to be honest, I can't name every single one of these in here because some of them are 50, 60 years old, you know, going down the line, 1950s, some of these old Jags and stuff. But some of the cars I do know, which I still appreciate, the older lot, I can't get over. Something like the 300 SL to me is my favourite car here. And something you just don't see every day. I car sport every week, go to car shows. You don't see a 300 SL like that. So let's go around and see what else we can find. Scoot, I'm sat in the Salon Privé Concours d'Elegance winning Mura owned by the Lewis family here as part of the Zach's garage and 
it's as if it's brand new. Honestly, they've restored this. And I'm just happy to be sat in it still because I've been out in Jane's uh, phenomenal green Eura. This is just what a place to be. You can just leave me alone, mate. I'm just gonna sit here. Let me close the door, see you later. This is uh, unbelievable. Scoot, I'm in the back end of the Regera and I know we've seen this car so many times, but when you have time without everybody around it, you get to see some of the highlights of this design. Come and have a look around the back here. Now I'm gonna sound a bit like Supercar Blondie, but if you look at this, you look at it from a distance, you think it's the diffusers. These are the exhausts. Isn't it great? And then this, that's the intake to cool the batteries for the hybrid power, the gold, the finish in here is absolutely ridiculous. And we've spoken to Zach about spec in the car, uh, loads of zoom calls, and also uh, one visit to Koenigsegg. Three years in the making, and the 24 gal gold in the paintwork, diamonds in the headlights, carbon everywhere. And it's not just a blue carbon exposed finish, it's a two color blue. And it was an amazing process they had to go through to get that finish. First time Koenigsegg had ever done it. Undoubtedly, one of the world's best known Koenigseggs. That spec, that finish, that car, that color, this garage. I don't think I've been anywhere like it. It's amazing. <laughs> Lotus Cortina, Daytona 400 GT, Mini, Cooper S, Fraser Nash. If you don't know, just Google Fraser Nash, you'll find out. But the best gull wing in the world. This gull wing, one Pebble Beach. This gull wing, one Salon Privé for the best European gull wing in the world. But we need to look under the hood. Check this out. I did not expect it to look like that under the hood. What a car. This is exactly why this car is a jewel in the crown for this whole collection. It's the best gullwing in the world and it is a work of art. So of course in Zach's garage, one of his main cars he's known for now is Koenigsegg. He had a Nagera R, which I've seen plenty of times at shows. He's now got a Koenigsegg Regera, which I've seen at quite a few. It's been to Sharnbrook, which I'm going to throw in a few clips here. So it's Salon Privé. Um, and then we also go down to the studio in Southampton, which will also be a vlog that you should check out on our YouTube channel. And with Chio today, we were talking about what's our favorite car. For me personally, it's a 300 SL for the history. But like we've said, me growing up in my generation, this is what it's about. The hypercars, the crazy LaFerraris, Bugatti Chirons. I know more about these, and of course, these are crazy classics around here. And this is kind of my era. And yes, yeah, so we've got Regera. So let me throw in some B-roll, and yeah, we'll see where we go from there. The most eclectic collection ever. Aston Martin. <laughs> Aston Martin. Like, this is before, like, yeah, the war. Triumph TR3. Austin Healy. I never knew Daimler's even looked like this. This one's been uh, having some work done on it at the moment, but another Triumph. Triumph Dolomite, three-wheeler over there. Just, I think the word is eclectic. Eclectic, you've got this Morgan sports car, three-wheeler here, fully really original. All the cars are absolutely mint, and then you've got a Pista. Let's go catch up with Zach, the owner of this phenomenal museum, and he's in his 1939 Logonda race car. Zach. Start it up.
So this is Zach. You've seen Zach before at the Sharnbrook and obviously everybody knows Zach through some of his amazing cars. Zach, this is the first time I've made it and the collection is phenomenal. Well, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Like, you must be really, really proud of how it's come together. How many years has it taken so to build it? It's taken about 10 years, maybe 12 years to build it from when we first started, when we first bought our first car to now be where it is today, really. What was the impetus? What gave you the kind of like encouragement to build that first car? Well, and the, what was the first car? The first car was a black 300 SC Cabriolet. Right. Um, and it was the first car we bought just because we fell in love with it. We just bought the house and we had a barn that was free. And so we thought, well, actually, it'd be really cool to have a classic car. Mm -hmm. And now it, we, we kept finding cars that we fell in love with. And we're now here. So speaking to Zach, speaking to Dad, every piece of memorabilia has a story. Every car has a story. And I could spend days here. L like, there's other things I know that you're looking for. There's other cars you're going to add and you're going to add more yeah. space. Yeah. And it's a con continuously evolving workspace, uh, art space, which is what I love about it. It is a museum of art. Yeah, it is. It's moving art. Moving Wicked. art. You've got a very special relationship with a lot of manufacturers. Yep. And most recently you've had the Regera delivered. How's your um, relationship with Koenigsegg and what does that mean to you? Well, it's a fantastic relationship. You know, that the, the first time I've ever experienced any brand, whether it be a car brand, clothing brand, or whatever that brand may be, the best form of customer service I've ever received. I mean, it's like, it's like a family. Um, you know, you know all of the owners, you know everyone who works at the factory. I could walk in the factory tomorrow and I'd know several people just by bumping Brilliant. into them. Wow. Like, that's, the, that's the way I explain it, really. Koenigsegg is literally the pinnacle of hypercar evolution at the moment. Um, and your car just achieved greatness at VMAX. Absolutely. What was the top speed? So we did 248 point something mile an hour. Wow. Um, it did do 200, I believe it did 250 on one of the runs, but it wasn't recorded. But it's got the top mark now. It's Absolutely. got the top score at VMAX. And I'm Ollie Webb, a brilliant driver, and yeah. he put that down for you as well. So I just... You get to that pinnacle and you think, what's next? But I just know, you're young, you've got this already and it's growing. I'm just so excited for the future of Zach's Garage. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to do with it and uh, hopefully there'll be plenty to do with the Schaumbrook and all that. Definitely. Brilliant, oh, excellent. The decibels on this Lagonda was absolutely crazy. Uh, hopefully you turned it up when you were watching. Zach, your mum and dad race this, don't yes, they? Yes, yeah. Yeah, well, Dad, this is Dad's race car. Mum's race car is in the workshop at the moment. Right. A few bits done, but it's believed to be one of the loudest cars in Europe, I think. And it was 140? 140 decibels on tick over. On tick over. Wow. This has been Zach's garage. It's been phenomenal. Scoot, you've had a great time looking around. Zach, we're going to be back Good. regularly. Good. Um, and thank you so much always for Good, your family's generosity no, to no, the events we've held the charity events we've held and the monies we've raised. So we'll be back. So you thought that was the only room full of cars. Well, you were wrong as Zach has got another facility filled with Jaguars. Let's call this a Jaguar room. As we've got Jaguars dotted all over the place, three times older than me. And I, I'm being honest, I couldn't even name some of the models. They are that old. I mean, like I said, this is out of my car knowledge league what i know and it is just amazing this is what i love though i love learning different things not just your classic lamborghinis and fries learning about some of these old jags it's amazing and as you can see above me there's a huge stage uh, like lighting you've got all the old american petrol pumps uh, lights everywhere it, it, the place is just like a museum like i said it's amazing i could literally just walk around like this all day i mean even when me and chiro arrived i had to just put the cameras down and just go this is one of the moments where i want to see it not for a camera actually in person and i've seen so many pictures of zach's place and one i didn't actually know this is didn't even know this was here i thought it was just his main bit where the regera is kept i didn't even know that was about the back room i mean there's a whole jaguar room and you might have seen in the background there's another room, so let's go check it out. 
So, coming up to this other hidden room, and again, it's in the Jaguar lair, let's say. Jaguar's everywhere. We've got that awesome, like, cool predator statue, which I swear you're only seeing like Hollywood movies and stuff, so Zach has everything. Again, you've got petrol pumps dotted around the place, hanging gas signs. We've got a yellow E-type. I mean, check that out. I mean, that is sick, and even I know that one, because I know how cool it is. But I think this is me over and out on the mic. And I can happily say I'm blown away and just thank you so much for Zach for letting us film here. Having these opportunities is amazing and yeah, what a day. So now we're in another part of the garage. Scooter's taking you around to have a look at this treasure trove. As you said, petrol heads lair. And you've got Scoot's opinion as a 19 year old, like most of these cars were built before he was born. And obviously they're a gear and a piece of a more Scoot's era. But the D-type, the C-Type Jag, original racing cars. Back up, back up. Hood ornament. We said touchy-feely on the Lamborghini. You just want to stroke the Jaguar. SS. These two SS's are one of ones in the world. The black one and the white one, one of ones. This SS100 is the first SS100 to do 100 miles an hour. It's just bonkers. But we're also hood ornaments. The Austin Swallow. Look, you need hood ornaments on cars, you know? It's just absolutely brilliant. Like, you look at the cars, you look at the spec. We talk about spec nowadays, you're talking colours, wheels, things like that. Look at the spec on this. I don't even know what that does. But it's bloody cool. It's probably air conditioning, because it must get, get air going there and, like, something. But Zach's Garage is definitely an awesome place to come to. We've got a private visit next year. Uh, people bought tickets to visit Zach's Garage and the money went to the Chestnut Tree Children's Hospice. We've managed to sponsor Christmas Day from the money we raised from that event, about nine and a half thousand pounds. But we're gonna be releasing 20 special tickets through our Petrol Hedonism Ambassador Scheme first to come along with us on that day. We haven't decided when it's gonna be yet. It's gonna be from April onwards, once this COVID has gone but we're going to bring down a whole petrol hedonism day out to Zach's Garage. And we've just agreed a Lamborghini Club UK day out to Zach's Garage for Lamborghini Club members as well. So honestly, you've been blown away, haven't you? I have, I have And the day's not even finished. We're going to a couple of special places after this. But for this vlog, the Zach's Garage vlog, we're done. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Please comment, tell us about what you want to see. We're doing all sorts. We've got so much in the can and this is really Scoot's opportunity this year to blow up our channel and, well, you've seen loads of cars and that's what you want, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, thanks for tuning in.